Hello dearest friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Diana and the Book Hunt. I want to talk about today one of the genres or subgenres that we are celebrating in the month of February. In the month of February in the bookish world, we celebrate Feral Feb, which is short for Fantasy Romance February. And Fantasy Romance actually has got this new alias, Romantasy. It's been dubbed that way in the past couple of months because of Goodreads, I think. And it's been kind of really popular and I'm very happy about that because I've gotten into fantasy romance in the past two years or so and slowly but surely I'm building up the books that I've read in that genre and I've really loved the books that I've picked up most of them so what I want to do today is tell you all about the fantasy romance books that I've been loving lately these are all books that I've read in the past year and most of these I finished the series. For some of them I'm still working my way through them but I'm definitely intrigued to continue on so I'm going to talk about those in a moment and what I've decided to do because I've been doing this in my videos when it comes to recommendations um, I also want to mention a couple of books that are on my TBR off of that genre so maybe if you get to the end of the video and you see all the books that I'm interested and intrigued to pick up if you've read them maybe you can recommend them to me and tell me whether you've loved them as well so essentially this is partially a recommendation video and partially a fantasy romance TBR for myself as well so without further ado I'm diving in so I can tell you all about the wonderful fantasy romances that I've read lately so if you're a fantasy romance reader, some of these are definitely not going to be a surprise for you because they're quite popular series. The first of them not being any kind of surprise, it's the Crown of Nyaxia series by Carissa Broadbent. This series blew up about a year, year and a half ago through booktube and Instagram, I think. The first book is called The Serpent and the Wings of Night. And I really loved both of the books, the duology uh, of this story. We follow Oriya and Rain. Both of them are competing in this kind of competition that is happening every 200 years. And the competition is very fierce because it's mainly between vampires. When it comes to the competition, the winner of that competition will win one wish with the goddess Nyaxia. And it's a wish that is very coveted because you can get a lot of, a lot of power through it. And we've got our heroine Oriya, who actually is a human. She was rescued by a vampire when she was very young because her city was under siege and this vampire, he kind of adopted her and he actually was the like ruler of the realm at that time. And he still was the ruler when the Kajari was happening. So he wanted her to participate in the Kajari because he wanted her to win it so that she can request a very specific wish that will have her protected from all of the vampires who are actually a very big danger to her. And when she starts to compete, she meets Rain, who is a vampire. He actually used to be human, but he was turned. And he is a very powerful vampire. And he kind of wants to ally with Araya for specific reasons. So yeah, it's a very interesting story. If you love like the competition type of read, like the Hunger Games or anything like that, this definitely has that in abundance. There is a great romance within the duology. There is, um, I don't want to mention what's happening in the second book, so it doesn't spoil you for it, but there is a lot of amazing tropes that I absolutely love in the second book as well. And the thing about, uh, Carissa Broadbent's books is that I really love the politics within them. Typically I really am very intrigued by politics within books. I really want to see how different ideologies and different types of um, social constructs are placed within a world and this was really a very good read for me. I really love the politics side of the books so yeah I really appreciated these. I gave both of them five stars. If you haven't picked them up yet please do so. 
The next series is one that I actually haven't heard anyone talking about. So this is one of the few that are not very popular through booktube and bookstagram. So you might want to look into them if you like dark fantasy romance, because this is definitely a dark fantasy romance. So the first and second book are not really that dark, but from the third book on, it becomes very dark. This is a five book series. The books are not very long. I got through them on audio within about five to six days. So it wasn't too bad in terms of how long they are. So yeah, within these books, we've got the first book called Fortune Favors the Cruel. Within the series, we've got the heroine whose name is Quinn Darkova. She is a very powerful magi. She used to be enslaved, but she has won her freedom one way or another and she very much is looking forward to get revenge on the people who sold her into slavery and the hero in this story is Lazarus Fierte who notices Quinn he knows about uh, her powers he himself is also a very powerful magi and he needs her alliance to do something for him that will get him to a specific position. I don't want to spoil too much, so I'm kind of trying to be as vague as possible, but he basically needs Quinn's assistance. So he comes up with this plan. He saves her from a very dangerous predicament because she came to a situation where she had to expose how powerful she is as a Magi. And within that society, um, that could have gone very wrong. So he saves her from that situation and proposes a deal to her that she cannot refuse. So within the five books, there is this huge quest that they go on. They go through different regions where they meet different people who help them within their situations. They have this found family aspect within the books. And I really, really love the politics of these books as well. There are very many dark things that go on from book three on. So please be warned that you need to check the trigger warnings. If you don't really like dark romances, you need to look them up. But I really enjoyed these books. I haven't heard anyone talking about these. So if you're intrigued by what I just told you, please look them up so you can add them to your TBR. The next couple of books are by a very popular author, but I think these are ones that are not very popular off of her backlist. The books are the Underworld Gods series by Karina Halley, starting with River of Shadows. This is actually kind of like a paranormal fantasy romance that starts in the real world where we've got our heroine Hannah. She finds out that her father has recently passed away. He lives in Finland, so she travels from the United States to Finland for his funeral, but she very quickly finds out that his body is missing. And from that point, the magical part of the story begins. She has this guy who offers her to take her into this underworld realm where he believes that her father is being held because he's a very powerful shaman. And uh, she agrees to go with him because she wants to save her father very badly. So she goes into this underworld realm, which is essentially the realm of the dead. And she has a romance with the god of death. It's a very kind of interesting fairy tale like um, situation with a lot of Finnish mythology elements within the story, which I really very much appreciated because it was something that I had never read about. So I was very intrigued to push on in the series, especially the first part within the first book is kind of like uh, a quest again, where they are going through uh, different parts of this underworld world and they're coming across different creatures this these like mythological creatures that they need to pass through in certain respects they need to battle through these mythological creatures to get to where they need to be to free her father it's a very interesting read i really liked it i gave both of the books that i've read within this series four stars and please check them out
Next up, we've got a favorite author of mine who usually writes contemporary stories, but she recently, as of the last, I think, three years, has released a series that is a fantasy romance series. I'm talking about K.A. Tucker, and the series is called Fate and Flame series, the first one being A Fate of Wrath and Flame. This is a very interesting one. I started reading this at the end of the summer, and I really binged through the first three books. I think there's only three books out now within this series, and I really, really enjoyed it. We've got our heroine, Ro Maria, who lives in the contemporary, like, normal world where we live in, in New York, and she's actually a thief. She gets propositioned by these interesting characters to get into this parallel world to steal something for them, but at the same time she gets something in return. She agrees to that, she goes into this world, and she very immediately finds out that she's not a very loved person in this realm. It turns out that she is the lookalike of this princess who was betrothed to be married to this prince and she actually tried to kill someone from his family. So it's a very interesting and very kind of dynamic start of the story. We find out that it's an enemies to lover situation. We find out that the betrothed like king or prince, I don't remember what his title was, uh, that he very much is looking forward to killing her because of what she did, but he is noticing some differences in her that uh, kind of make him wary of who she is. He very much senses that she is different from who he knew as the Princess Romaria. So this is how the story starts. It's a very interesting read because we find out through the progression of the story that Romaria definitely has powers that are untapped. <laughs> so yeah, I, I really like these ones. I gave them all four stars and I'm looking forward to the continuation of the series. Because in this video we're talking about all kinds of romantic stories that I've really liked lately, I cannot not mention Fourth Wing and Iron Flame, the Empyrean series by Rebecca Yarrows. I really enjoyed those stories. I gave Fourth Wing four stars, I gave Iron Flame five stars. I know it's an unpopular opinion, but I have my reasons for that. I think that I'm the type of reader that is just uh, more influenced by the political setting within a book, uh, like I mentioned with Carissa Broadbent's book as well, uh, books as well. I really enjoy it when there is some kind of a political motive, when there is maybe a war going on that needs to be overcome in one way or another. Those are uh, motives or themes within books that I really enjoy. And I was flying through Iron Flame, I really liked it. I had my remarks, like many other people, about certain things that maybe could have been done better or could have been avoided, but still I enjoyed that book so much that it just made sense for me to give it five stars. If you haven't read Fourth Wing, which I very much doubt because everyone has read Fourth Wing by now, I can still give you a short synopsis. We've got our heroine Violet, who is supposed to become a scribe, like a scholar, essentially, when uh, she becomes of age. Her mother is the general of the army of the society, and she decides that Violet is going to go to dragon school. And that dragon school is very vicious, very um, compromising, because you can definitely lose your life throughout the training within the academy. She has a chronic illness, so it becomes very clear that she is the underdog within the situation. The hero within the story is Zayden, who is actually her enemy within this situation because her mother, Violet's mother, has killed part of his family because of some betrayal. So they definitely have bad blood between the families and he is also one of their like quadrant leaders. So he kind of has power over her within uh, this academy. And it's definitely an enemies to lovers situation. And it could have been maybe more overdone, like the enemies part could have been 
taken to a bit of a more extreme so it really becomes enemies to lovers in my opinion but it still was well enough developed for me to enjoy it and yeah if you haven't picked up fourth wing where have you been in the past year or so everyone has been talking about these books so yeah if you haven't picked them up please try them out next i'm going to talk about another series by carissa broadbent because i read those also about a year ago and I really really enjoy them. These are not so heavy on the romance as the Crown of Nyaxia series but I still really enjoy them. The books are The War of Lost Hearts starting with Daughter of No Worlds and I think that what really drew me to this series is again the politics within <laughs> this series. There is a war going on and all of those like tactics and the history of how this war developed and how they need to overcome the obstacles to have a winner within this war. It was just fascinating to me. Within this series we've got our heroine Tizana who she was a slave and she was promised that she can buy her freedom but eventually she obviously is misled in that by the person who has enslaved her. She finds a way to freedom and decides to go to this very powerful order that is essentially like an organization for like magic wielders and for like uh, the people who prepare you to go into this war. And her teacher within this order is Max, who essentially is also the love interest. This is a story that when it comes to the romance is very much a friends to lover story. Their feelings develop over the progression of them getting to know each other. And at the same time, like I mentioned, it's very politically heavy. And this is something that I definitely enjoy. I'm not sure if you enjoy it. If you don't enjoy very politically heavy settings within fantasy worlds, this may not be for you. But for me, I gave the first book four stars and then the rest of the books five stars. I really enjoyed this world. I also enjoyed the fact that within the second book, we actually got a parallel romance. With, with characters that I don't want to explain too much because it's going to get complicated but there's essentially two romances going on um, within these books so I really enjoyed that as well and yeah I definitely am going to pick up more of Carissa Broadbent's works she has a novella I think that is part of the Nyaxia world and I'm not sure if she has one other novella I really need to look that up but I definitely want to read through all of her backlist the next series I'm going to talk about are probably by the most famous romantic fantasy romance author that we know, Sarah J. Maas. I'm going to be reading through the Throne of Glass series this year. I've already started. I've read the first two books as well as the novella that is coupled within this series. So I've read Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight and Assassin's Blade. And I've really enjoyed them all. The first one I gave three stars because, and that is normal because I just have very high expectations off of this series because I've just heard so much about it. And this is a very decent introduction. I gave it three stars. I really did enjoy it, but because I just have a feeling I'm going to enjoy the other follow-up books much more. The uh, Assassin's Blade I gave three and a half to four stars. And then I gave... Crown of Midnight four stars. I really enjoyed the series. I honestly didn't know when I started on the series that it starts off as a young adult series. Essentially in the first book the heroine is around 16 years old and 16 or 17 if I'm not mistaken. Her name is Celiana and she is the world's most dangerous and the best assassin in the world. She has been through a lot, which we find out in Assassin's Blade, actually, that is where her history lies, essentially. And then in Throne of Glass, we find out at the start of the book that she has been imprisoned and she gets the opportunity to get out of prison to participate in this competition. The winner of the competition will become the king's champion, so the king's assassin who will get tasked with doing essentially the king's dirty work for a lot of money. 
and she knows that she can win this even though she has been malnourished and she has lived through prison for specific reasons she knows that she can win this she gets help from the prince within this society, Prince Dorian, as well as, I'm not sure what his official title is, but like the king's guard leader or something like that, Kaol. Uh, these two guys are essentially, both of them uh, uh, develop feelings for her and she is really focused on the competition. At the start of the book, or actually not at the start of the book, but throughout the progression of the book, uh, she essentially really is focused on getting to the point where she can become the king's champion because that means a certain type of freedom for her. So within the first book, we don't get a lot of romance. Within Assassin's Blade, we get a romance from her past. And then in Crown of Midnight, we get a romance between Celiana and one of the two guys that are introduced in the first book. So... It's a very interesting world where a woman is kicking ass left and right. She is the best at what she does. I love that for her. Obviously, there are certain things that uh, kind of you need to suspend your disbelief for them. But I've really enjoyed the start of this series. I can't wait to get my hands on the third book to see how it's going to develop. Because in the second book, we already find out that there is this parallel magical world that we need to find out more about and we're going to dive into the history of Celiana's lineage more in the third book so I'm very much looking forward to finishing this series this year. It's time to talk about the five books that are fantasy romance books that are very high on my TBR at the moment. All of these actually I've heard Jess from Honest Fiction talking about lately and I really love her channel because she's so eloquent when it comes to describing fantasy books. It's so difficult for me at least as someone who is very new to fantasy books or fantasy romance books to describe them. So when I listen to her it just sounds so easy and then when I start filming I'm like how does she do it? So Jess kudos to you, you're doing an amazing job. But yeah, she just recently did this video of 15 underrated fantasy romance books and I have a couple of them on my TBR, high on my TBR, so I'm going to talk about those. And only one of them I think I found through Storytel because I have it available to me on audio, so I decided to add it to this list. And it's actually the first book I'm going to mention. That book is Accord This Cruel and Lovely by Stasia Stark. I think I heard, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Tori from Novel Life was talking about this book. I may be wrong, but I think I heard it from her channel that she enjoyed it. The book is about a heroine who has this hidden power and she strikes a deal with this mercenary who is supposed to help her like uncover what her power is or how she needs to wield it. I'm not sure if I'm describing this correctly because um, again, I'm not very good at finding out what fantasy books are about and I also don't want to know too much, honestly, before I dive in. But this is a book that when I heard someone talking about it, it sounded really intriguing. So I added it to my TBR and saw that I have it available on Storytel. The second book on my TBR is The Book of Azrael. This book, I honestly have heard a lot of people talking about it lately, so I think it's quite popular now. The book is about Diana who awakens this god and then goes to search for this Book of Azrael. That is some kind of a very powerful book. I'm not sure what the meaning of this book is, but um, yeah, it sounds like an interesting, again, like a quest kind of book. So she and this god go on this quest to find this item and it, it just sounds really good and everyone has been raving about it. So I definitely want to read that. I think um, I have it available maybe in ebook. It's not on Kindle Unlimited, if I'm not mistaken, but I think I can get it through Libby. I'm not sure. I need to find out how I can get my hands on it. And then the next one is one that I just, I think it was the first book that Jess recommended in her video. The book is A King So Cold by Ella Fields. And I think I have the audio on Storytel for that one. In this one, the heroine is this queen who essentially she explained it like it's like the emergence of this 
queen who becomes a very merciless and cold type of queen so essentially the emergence of a villain within her era so this is an interesting sounding book to me and i think it's a duology so i'm looking forward to discovering if i like this one and then the next one is one that I've had on my TBR for a long time. I have the audio for this one as well. It's Entreat Me by Grace Draven. And it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And what I like about this one is that I've heard Brie talking about it from In Love and Words as well as Jess from Honest Fiction. They both mentioned that it's kind of uh, like a mature kind of... The, the characters are really mature and that is something that I'm very much looking forward to discovering in fantasy books because most of the books that I've read center on the new adult age or young adult and I really want to have more adult <laughs> uh, characters within my fantasies to see how I'm going to enjoy those. So I'm really looking forward to Entreat Me by Grace Draven. And then the last one is one that Jess was really raving about. She said that her viewers definitely need to pick this up so I'm looking forward to discovering whether I like this one or not. The book is called A Court of Blood and Binding by Lizette Marshall. And this one, we've got a human heroine, we've got Faye, and what I remembered most about how she described it is that um, the hero within the story has difficulty speaking, and the human heroine um, teaches him sign language or something like that, so that is something I'm very intrigued by. I definitely want to try out this book to see how I'm going to enjoy it. And there's many, many more that I have on my TBR, obviously, but these five I definitely want to get my hands on as soon as I can and as soon as I'm in the mood for them. So yeah, that wraps up my video about fantasy romances. Feral Feb is coming to its end at the end of this week. However, I definitely am going to continue on reading fantasy romances. I think it's safe to say that at the moment, almost everyone is in their fantasy romance era. So I think it's safe to say that it's okay to continue on reading it after February. Please let me know which books you have enjoyed out of this genre. Have you been reading a lot of fantasy romances in February? Tell me which ones you've enjoyed. Tell me which ones I should add to my TBR. Have you read any of the books that I mentioned in this video and what you thought about them? Please leave your opinions down below in the comment box. I look forward to reading them and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like my videos and comment down below. I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful for a marvelous day. Happy reading. Take care and bye-bye.